All right. Please rotate your papers. Whoever is grading, write corrected by at the bottom in red. In red. As you correct, please write in the correct answer. Don't just mark stuff wrong. Okay, don't get tripped up on number one. Any number times what is just that number? One. One. That's how hard that was. Uh, if you have root one, I will actually take that. But that's the only correct answer there. Root, uh, three root two times root two goes like this. Root two times root two is just two. Three times two is six. Okay, root two times root two is technically root four. That's why I had you circle that three there, to make sure you didn't drop the three. Any radical times itself is just the number on the inside. So root 11 times root 11 is 11. Okay, those are the only three correct answers. If they got them all right, plus two, one and two wrong, plus one, all oh, three wrong, plus zero. Okay, at the bottom, line number one looks like so. We're going to change this to y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to have negative 2y equals negative 6x plus 10, divide everything by negative 2, negative 2, negative 2, goodbye. I get y equals uh, 6 over 2x, oops, that's negative, minus 5, or they could have y equals 3 over 1x minus 5. If they just, it, it, it could just be 3, guys, wait, I'm not done. If they just have 3, it's fine. If they just take, because 3 over 1 is just 3, right? Yeah. Okay, so I, I leave the 1 there so that it's easy to graph. Okay, so we start at negative 5 like so, and we know what's positive goes up, left to right, 1, 2, 3, over 1. Or you could even go down, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and over 1 this way. Or you can go up 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and over 2. Doesn't matter. Either way, your line is here. That's worth 2 points, all or nothing. 2 points, all or nothing. X equals 8, looks like so, it's 8 comma something, so it's all the points where x is 8. The easiest way to do this is just to graph a bunch of points that have an 8 in the x, so 8, 0, 8, 1, 8, 2, 8, 3, 8, 4, 8, 5, 8, 6, and this, my friends, is x equals 8. That's only worth one. You have it on the left? No, horizontal is wrong, sir. doing today? The first thing we're doing, you write this down, is something called conjunctions and disjunctions. Dis, disjunct. I don't care where you write it. I said anywhere. You have huge margins on those papers. Put it on the front. Top margin or front bottom margin? Conjunction and disjunction. Conjunction and disjunction. Yeah, if you didn't put it up here. Thank you very much. All righty, second thing we're going to talk about today is something called inductive and deductive. Inductive and deductive. Your B 
Last one we're going to talk about is rules of logic. Rules of logic. Okay, I'm going to come back to that list and check off some as we've got three cycles of learning. I will give you a break in between. There will be things you need to do to demonstrate your understanding. Conjunctions and disjunctions are the easiest concept to grasp. Take a look here on the right. Do I have any two sports people? Two sports people. Raise your hand. I got a lot of you. Okay, put your hands down just for a moment. All you need for this are two symbols today. This little carrot, trace it. Physically trace that carrot. That little symbol there, that is going to be an and. Notice I draw the A just like the carrot to help you remember the little carrot means and. And. That is a conjunction, an and statement. The little V is an or. The rest of the symbols you've seen before. The little carrot is an and, the little V is an or. A conjunction is an and statement. This is like English class. And statement because of that. Con means with. So a conjunction, you have two things joined together. That's an and statement. Disjunction is an or statement. Disjunction is an or. Like disjoint. You take two concepts that are kind of related, but it's usually a contrast usually a contrast. Okay, listen closely to this example. Who's my two sports people again? Two sports? Two sports, raise your hand. Okay, two sports, two sports, two sports. Okay, what are your two sports? Football and, wait, how do you remember the two sports in the same team? Oh, oh, I, I, that's right. Is it girls soccer this summer? No, no. no. I, I thought it was two different teams. Two different teams. Conjunction, an and statement, a conjunction, which is an and statement, is only true when both components are true. A conjunction is only true when both components are true. It can only be a true statement if he's in football and soccer if he is actually in football and soccer. Okay? Did I lose anybody with that concept? Okay. So now I'm going to do an or statement. So listen again. Or statement. If I say he's in football or swimming in your team, discuss whether that's a true or false statement. Go. In your team. He's in football or swimming. Discuss in your team whether that is true or false. I'll test with someone in about 10 seconds after you discuss.
what do you think? True or false? False. False. Why? You're correct. Because he's not in either one. So here's what you guys need to memorize. A disjunction, a disjunction is only false when both are false. A disjunction, put or next to it. Conjunction, put an and next to it. And, and. Okay, these two statements. Would I like you to have each person in your team recite these two highlighted statements out loud, like this. A conjunction and is only true when both are true. A disjunction or is only false when both are false. Everybody says that out loud one at a time. Go. Everybody says it, please. When you're done talking it out, turn the page. When you're done talking it out, turn the page. Working through problems one through six, I'm actually going to do six with you, and this is a logical activity that we are just now doing. We're applying what we just learned. So look up here, please. It says, if P is false, circle P and put a little F net over it. Okay? It says, if P is false, I'm just on the very next page. Just take where you're at and flip it to the back. So P is false, cross out the word false, we've accounted for that. And Q, circle Q, and Q is false. So I cross stuff out after I account it for it. I'm on number six. So we're told, <coughs> given P and Q are false. Now we have to translate this statement and we're going to determine whether the whole statement is true or false. That's, we're going to determine whether the whole thing is true or false by doing this, okay? So under Q, Q is what? Out loud? False. false. Okay, so we put a false here. Now, trace this little caret. Is that an and or an or? And. and. So I write and. Now, parentheses, like regular math, you have to work the parentheses first. So come in here. Okay, this P is false. Where am I getting this information? It's right there. Trace, this little V, and or, or. Or, so put an or there. Now this is not rocket science, guys. If Q is false, the opposite of Q is? Good, I'm glad you got that. I had one person yesterday, it took us three rounds to figure that out. So if, <laughs> I don't know why. They kept going, it's not false. I'm like, what's not false? True, okay. All right, so this now is true. Are we, did I lose anybody there? No, yep. Okay, opposite of Q is true. Okay, now look at this whole, circle this whole thing, because it's in parentheses. That is a disjunction. A disjunction is only false when both are false. Otherwise, it's true. So for that whole value there, we're going to say this is true. And put an F here. See, I brought that down. It's just kind of like math. You do what's in parentheses. A disjunction is only false when both are false. So because they're not both false, I put a true there. Now we have a conjunction. Circle this whole thing. <laughs> a conjunction is only true when both are false. 
always are true. Are both true here? Yes or no? Are both true? Yes or no? Out loud. No. So the whole value of the whole thing is false. The value of the whole statement is false. Okay, physically circle this. You mean this to here? No, I don't. I don't see F N T. This thing right here. That whole thing. Why is it true? Uh, computer programming. It's also logic skills. When you're in debates, you use stuff like this. Yeah, yeah, you do. That's called false. All right, guys. So what I'd like you to do is, if if you kind of got the idea of this. There's at least six of you. I, I can tell by the look in your eyes. Okay, there's at least six of you that you're, I'm not convinced in this way. Come on up. Bring your clipboards. We'll do one more. Okay. Uh, you choose. One through five. You choose. I don't, I don't care which one. Four? Okay. Give me a second. I'll get this one more down while I'm at it. Okay. Clement, 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 do, 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 do. All righty, so four it is. You said four? Okay, so let me erase what's here. Students, uh, when, you're, oh, hang on. When you're, those of you sitting, you kind of know what you're doing, finish one through five, red pen, and then I want you to check your work with the red pen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's like a, it's like Wait, can I try using that pen and erase that one? You want to you wanna race? Yeah, Go for it. <laughs> Go ahead and race the whole thing so we don't get confused. Okay, good. Keep going. Isn't that cool? Oh, that's so fun. Oh, great. All righty, guys. So, step number one, okay? It says, if P is false, circle P and put a little F above it. You, you always have some information you start with. Now, I've accounted for that word false. I'm in the habit I cross stuff out as I account for it. Okay? It said, and Q is true, so I circle Q, I put a little T above there, and they're doing. Jenna, how are you guys doing, dear? Good. One through five? Fabulous. Who else? Patrick, do you, you want to do one more with us, or are you doing okay? You're good? Okay. Russell, do you want to do one more with us? Okay, then come on up here. Okay. State the truth value of this, okay? So we come here, notice the parentheses, okay? This P here is the same as this P, so it's false. You okay with that concept? Yeah. You guys holler if I lose you anywhere. I'm OK, circle the P. Circle the P. Do you, told, do you see that you're told P is false? Yeah. Then P is oh, false. Sorry, I thought it said No, no, no. OK, now I trace this, and I ask myself, is that an and or an or? or. That's an or, so I put an or yeah, there. Because the V is or. If it looks like an A, it's an and. Yes. Uh. Yes, you may. Thank you. Okay, and now look at Q. Q, you're told, is what? True. So look here. So Q is going to be true. You okay? Have I lost any of you? Okay. Now we come here. We trace the little V. Is that and or or? That's an or again. And I look at this P and I come up the same P. Or it's a false. Okay, now hang on. We're not quite done yet. We have to, now we have to work the parentheses. Okay. That is a disjunction. One false, one true. The whole value of the disjunction, what do you think? Is that true or false? True, true or false. True. It's an or statement. True or false. An or statement is only false when both are false. Oh. That's what you just said on the other side. So it's a true. So this value Wait, here. No, 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 sweetheart, listen very carefully. And statements true, only both true. Say it after me. And statements true, only both true. Or statements false, only if both false. Say it. Or statements false, only if both false. Good. So here we have one true, one false. So this whole thing, we bring it over here, is going to be true. Or. Are we going off the statement stated that P is false? 
Yes, dear. But yeah, but yeah, but now the parentheses forces me to deal with just that statement. That is a disjunction, and it's true because oh, yes, you may check. Okay. I'll do another one with you if necessary. Okay. That's a dis. Okay. Watch. I okay. What two sports are you like? Are you a two sports guy? Okay. Ten years old. What do you win? Okay. If I say, uh, actually, let's say you're not. Let's. You're only in baseball. If I say you're in baseball or football, is that a true statement? Yes. So a disjunction is true even if one's false. That's what you just said. A disjunction or statement's true even if one thing's false. It's only false if I say you're in swimming or or, or whatever else you're not. Uh, okay, do you see that? So, I don't get the T or Okay, if you understand what you're doing, sit down. If you're not, stay again. I'll do another one with you, okay? The answer for this is true. No, dear. Hey, what you can do, please, is adopt someone who looks lost and sit with them and work. Okay, so, yes. Amanda? How are you guys doing? You guys should be almost done. Are you almost done? I'm going to bring Amy. Amy, can you join, please, Jenna and Amanda and work with them, please? Okay? Great. And who else? Uh, Whitney, are you signed off? We'll do another one together. Choose another one. I'll do it with you. Don't want it. All right, let's do number one. Okay. Number one? That's the one you want? Do I have to redo it's algebra? Totally I don't know, dear. Where did you take algebra? Did you take algebra with us? Where did you? I was at a public school. How about this? Let's have that discussion lunch or after school, okay? Because that is a very serious discussion. I want to have the time just to talk to you, okay? Okay. Let's, Wait, let's, let's, do, let's do like the next part of school. Okay, I don't, let's get something in there that has some layers to it. Number three. So if P is false. Okay, so yeah, let's always set it up first. So if P is false, so we're going to circle P and put an F above it. Okay. Sam, are you guys all done there? Are you all checked on the board? You're all done. Scott, are you, are you done? You're done. So that's why you're sitting there bored. Um, what's his name? Uh, Jacob, are you done? Good, okay. Now, one more time. So, now, if P's false, opposite P is? True. true. That's true. Okay? That, that is an and statement. We're told Q. What are we told about Q? It is true, so that's true. Okay, now look at the whole value. An and statement is only true if both are true. Are both true? Good, then it's true. Ta-da! Okay, so what's going to happen is I'm going to have to move on to the next section. Next time I give you guys a break, you need to backtrack, finish, and check, because this is going to be part of your classwork, okay? And I'll be happy to help you with it. All right? All right. Students, um, After this, I'll give you a short little break. 
Okay, so we are now done with one. Conjunction, disjunction. Conjunction, disjunction. In fact, I want us to say these two statements out loud together. Go to your front page. Okay? Go to your first page right here. Okay? You may check. Repeat after me. A conjunction is true only if both components are true. Say Now we're going to do inductive, deductive reasoning. You got a little bit of this last night. Let me give you a real life example, okay? If I were to give every Valley Christian student a survey, and I just ask about the time they spend in class, the many different classes, your sports activities, theater, art, dance, etc., and then I take, go like this, put your hands in front of you, like this, hands in front of you, and say, take in. Okay, so hands in front of you out. Say, take in. I take in all those informations, observations, and then I have what I call an aha. Say, aha. aha. I discover aha. a truth. Looking at those surveys, I come to this aha. Oh, you're a Valley Christian student. You live a crazy, busy life. Okay, if you're a Valley Christian student, then you live a crazy, busy life. That's my aha. Okay? That's called inductive reasoning. Write this down. If I have multiple observations, multiple observations. We have multiple observations. I take in information. That's what the arrows kind of point to. You take information in, and you come to a general truth. I'm going to call that the aha. I take in information and I come to a general truth. That's inductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning. I take in information. I discover truth. That's my aha. Now, Draw a line from here to here. Can you rage this? Uh -huh. Kind of. Okay. Is it just one? Okay. If I take my aha uh -huh and I apply it to a certain situation, that's called deductive. Deductive reasoning. I take my aha and I apply it to a, underline the word specific situation. That is deductive reasoning. At one point you discover truth, the other one you apply a truth. You discover truth, you apply truth. So that's the difference between inductive and deductive. You discover truth. Deductive 
reasoning. I want you and your teams, each of you take 15 seconds and in your own words, your own description, describe what is the difference between inductive, deductive, 15 seconds each go. Okay, guys, take 10, take 10, 15 seconds each. Describe what is it? How about How about each of you? I want verbally discuss. What's the inductive Verbally discuss. Inductive deductive. Can you see verbally discuss? Verbally, I don't remember doing that. Can you discuss verbally? Okay. All right, take a look on the right side of your paper, please. Okay, you have three bullets. And these three bullets, I want you to read them out loud. So take turns reading out loud. Then determine as a team whether it's indexing or deductive. Make sure you're prepared to tell me why. In the bottom one, you must actually figure out the next three numbers in the sequence that was part of the videos last night. You must write out what your pattern is, what the pattern is, then determine Okay, ready? Go. Page four. You have four minutes. Get your cell phone out and I'll show you what to do. You got it? Okay, you should be on that last one. Inductive, dejective. I'm going to pester someone. Make sure you're ready to defend yourself.
listen carefully. When I call on you, do not answer like this. Deductive, and then watch my face. You should be prepared to tell me what your answer is and why it's correct. So let's start with this. Uh, Figoni, can you tell me, uh, Professor Chang, uh, what do you think? Deductive. Why do you believe so? Nice job sticking to your guns, because I, I, I used a tone of voice on you that maybe makes you doubt, but you stuck with it because the word knows. He starts with truth. He starts with an aha and applies it to something else. That was deductive reasoning. Nice job sticking to your guns and not letting me sway you from it. Cassie, the next one, Pythagoras, etc. Deductive, tell me why. Don't read my voice. I, I was I was messing Matthew up and he stuck me down. Tell me why. You gave a correct summary. Put your hands out like this. Did Pythagoras take in information and have an aha? No. Or or did he take an aha and apply it to a specific? Did did he start with the truth or did he discover a truth? Discovered it. Which one is that? What is it? Inductive. Nice job. Nice job. Thank you for working with me. I know it's like no fun getting it wrong when you. Yes, you want to. Cell phone. This is inductive. How many of you got at least two phones? Uh, two phones. I have two phones. Three, right? I just lost half the class. They're like ADHD. I've got two phones. Do you have two phones? Yeah, I've got three phones. Okay. Focus. Focus. Look up here. How many of you have at least these two bullets correct? That's what I'm looking for. Okay, last one. I'll let someone volunteer for this one. Volunteer, what do you think? Inductive or deductive? Give me a shot. Yes. And then I'll let Michael follow up in his. Yes. Deductive. Deductive. How do you know? Inductive. You said inductive. Why? Because. Quick, quick, changing your. Which one is it, Kitty? You think it's D. In what sense? Yes. Okay, listen carefully, guys. This was kind of a trick question because you had to know a truth to get these three, okay? That is deductive. But, Michael, do you want to add your two cents? He'll figure it out. You just keep wandering until you find it. But it's actually both, guys. Inductive. Why? Because you discovered a pattern, then you applied the pattern. It's actually both. It is actually both. How many of you said both? It's okay. I've done that before. Uh, you know, it's really embarrassing when you're in a teacher's meeting and you just see if you don't put the head down, if you try not to put the head down, then you start with really it's like Bob Bain and two hour meeting with Dr. Brody. Wow, no fun. I know the feeling. Don't be embarrassed, okay? If you need to, however, grab a clipboard and stand in the back if you need to stay focused. On that note, I think you guys need a break. So you are going to stand up. You're not going to stay seated. You're going to stretch the jumping jacks. You're going to do everything you to. Stand and come get your new video. Okay. 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 your papers up here. Uh, Cassie, I have yours here, ma'am. I have five of you still up here, so if yours isn't back there, it's because you're up here. Yes, Patrick? Uh, yeah, just put it here if you have yours. Just put it here, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. That's fine. You bet. Here, Ms. Stevens. There we go. And let's see. Maddie, come on down. Mr. Scott, here you go. Okay. Maddie, greeting. Yes, I am. I have like three. Going on here. Maddie, Allison, come on down. Maddie, right there. Okay, Allison, right here, right here, right here. Okay. Come on. Yes, I did, buddy. You got a five. It's there somewhere. You got it. You got all your credit. Don't worry about it. You got it. But it's good to question me. Who's this? It's in my hand. Jacob. 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 There you go. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 
Just, let me see. Matsy, 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 Matsy. No. Yes, I did, dear. Uh, where did I put it? Okay, sorry about that. There you go. Yep. Yes, sir. Uh, I say, uh, okay. I just, I forgot. I didn't go backwards. I got it now. Okay. Oh, nice job. Is it, um, uh, Matthew? Okay. I've got two Matthews. Hang on. Um, Lucas is absent. Oh. Fagoni, right? Uh, Garrido. Oh, you're Garrido, 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 Garrido. Okay, five. And you know what? Matt, have you taken the quiz? Oh, I need that done. There's not a great question. I've got it there. I've got it. Yes, yes, I've got it. Okay. Amy Hansen. Yes. Okay. Students, if you hear your name, I need you up here briefly, please. Russell, can I see you? David, can I see you briefly, please? Uh, let's see. Who else? Uh, Sophie's absent. Yes. Oh, that's right. We had that discussion. Okay. Thank you for reminding me. Got it. Video? You did? Okay. Okay. I got it. I got it. You're right. Okay. Students, have a seat. Hopefully, you took the time to stretch. You really should. When I give you a chance to do that. done here. Your escape problems today, so that you know, okay, pay attention, listen up. Do I need to do a formal, I need your attention please, or can you just kind of tune in and when I talk you stop? Okay, uh, I'm going to show you what you need to escape out of my classroom so there's no confusion, okay? Flip until you see page eight. Circle, it says door unlock, dog yard, door lock, dog yard. Look for that. Door lock, dog yard, door lock, dog yard. Circle. Eight. Circle eight. Circle eight. Door lock, door unlock, dog yard. Door unlock, dog yard. Okay? And then circle nine, please. Those are your sign-offs to get in class. If we have enough time, I'm going to add page 12, depending on the time, which is one single problem. Stop the moaning groaning, guys. Okay. Okay, you know what? Let me just show you where to go right now. Sorry if I lost you. Go to this page, 5. It says, Rules of Logic. Okay, page 5, Rules of Logic. Okay, now... What I'd like you to do here, so I'm going to make it nice and big. There are three rules I'm going to go over. Law of detachment, law of syllogism, law of conditional and contrapositive. One of these you already know. We learned last class this. If I have a conditional, if P then Q, that conditional is true. Contrapositive is also true. Also is contrapositive. That's the switch and negate. You switch and negate. That's the contrapositive. If the conditional is true, only the contrapositive is also true. When you're done writing, put your pencil down. 
Positive is true. Next one. Law of detachment says this. If I have a true conditional, if I have a true conditional, if P then Q is true. actually pull out the word syllogism, point it out and say, that was a syllogism, and then it was just stop the whole conversation. Because you do hear this, especially from teachers and parents, you hear this all the time. Let me prove it to you. Put your fingers like so. Fingers like so. Ready? You haven't figured that out yet. I just got that. Very visual kinesthetic. Remember I told you I talked with the head? Okay, so say it after me. Say, if I get a job, then I make money. Say, if I make money, then I buy what? What do you buy? A what? Car, TV, let's choose one. Food? No? Car? Car? Food? Okay, let's do food. You know why? Because it's lunchtime, we're all hungry. So I'm going to say, then I buy a burger. Okay, sorry, food it is. Okay, so let's complete the statement. Say, again, if I get a job, say it me. If I get a job, then I make money. If I make money, then I buy food. So, if I get a job, I what? Make money. Buy, no, look where my fingers are going. If I get a job, I buy food. That's called a syllogism. Okay, you might hear it like this. Here's another one. Let me give you another one. Write it out as I say it. Ready? Watch my letters. If you get good grades, that's my P statement. If you get good grades, then you get into a good college. Just, just work with me here. If P, then Q. If you get good grades, then you get into a good college. And if you get into a good college, that's another Q. Did you hear me repeat myself? Then you get a good job. Listen, is my handwriting that bad? So sorry, guys. Now, circle, circle, connect. The conclusion is, if you have good grades, then you get a good career. That's a syllogism. We connected the thir first to the third. That's a syllogism. That's a third stage. You know what? Don't just listen to what I'm saying. Listen. Ready? I'll give you an example. 
guys look at page seven page seven please don't melt down on me I know this seems like it's really complicated it's not I promise okay now you are given two true statements I'm going to read them. If you're a baseball player, please don't try to argue the finer details of this statement. Just pretend it's true. We're just on the very next page. It says, if you are a star player. Okay, guys, it's not hat hard. You turn the page, you look. It's page number, find book head. Okay? If the star player is sitting on the bench, a timeout has been called. Star player, we're going to make P. Then, timeout called, we're going to write Q. Write those with me or you're going to get lost. Star player is P, yada yada, sitting on the bench. Timeout has been called, Q is timeout. That's a true statement, why we're told it's true. Okay? Next one. If a timeout has been called, notice it's the same word. So that's going to be Q now, again. If a timeout has been called, then fans get restless. That's a third statement, so that's R. Okay, so now we're going to write down what we know right now is true. So step one, we know if P, then Q is true. Why? You're told it's true. You're kind of, you're, you have to start somewhere. Okay, then if Q then R is also true. Why? It's given to you. That's these two statements. You are lost right now. Your, hair, your hand better to the air. And okay. Now, now we need to think the laws that you just learned on the other page. What are some other true statements? Raise your hand if you think you might know one of them. Give me one. Yes. What's that? I can take P and connect to R, okay, because that is syllogism. So I'm going to write it down. If P, then R, why? Because that's a syllogism. That's the law of syllogism. Remember, the contrapositives are all true. So you switch and negate all three of them. So watch. I'm going to go opposite Q and opposite P. That's a contrapositive. I'm just going to write contra for shortness. You switch and negate. Last one, or second to last one. Opposite R, switch and negate, opposite Q. Opposite R and opposite P. All of these are the contra positive. Okay, look really carefully. Real careful. Do you see these? It's, it's different. These are the contra positives of these two. Okay, now, now that you have a list of potentially true, and that's the way I want you to do it. I want you to make a list of potentially true. Then, now you go through the actual sentences. Translate them into letters and it's a piece of cake. Watch. Number one, star player sitting on bench. That's only P. P alone. Look on your list. Are you told P by itself, lonesome, is true? True or false? True. No, P by itself. False. This is false. It, that's not in your list. P alone, not true. It's not given as true. You'll, you'll get another one. Uh, this will become clear as we do it. This is one of those things you only get as you do. So don't freak out.
Okay? Give me a second. No, dear, you're not, you have to be told P alone is true. You're not. Oh. Okay. All right. Number two, star player sitting on bench. Let's see, star player, that's P. Sitting on bench, then fans. Fans is R. If P, then R. Look at your list. Is there an if P, then R there? Yeah. On your list. Yeah. Uh-huh, right up there, the blue. So this is true. Ta-da, why? Because it's a syllogism. Syllogism. We're almost done. I'm going to do one more. I'm touching you to do a couple of your own. Okay. This one, number three. If fans do not, not, so that's R, but that's an opposite R. Time out, that's Q, not, so that's opposite Q. Underline the words not, that tells you opposite. Opposite R, opposite Q. Look up there, is that one of your choices? Opposite R, opposite Q. Mm -hmm. It's right here. Right there. So we can call this true because it's a contra positive. I want you to take a shot at four and five on your own. I'll give you the answer in about two minutes. Go. Do four and five just on your own. Really, don't get help from, team, from teammates right now. I want you to do it a cut, lonesome, all by yourself. No help. You can work with each other in a minute. Right now, no help. Okay, take a look up here, please, and see number four is true. It's a contra positive. Number five, however, is an inverse. Warning. Number five is an inverse, so it's not forced to be true. It's an inverse only of the second statement. Yes, ma'am? Yeah, I need a little bit more than that. You need to identify what it is. Now, what I'd like you to do, hang on with the hands, I'll come back to you. I want you now working on page eight. First, make your list of potentially true statements, then work your way to the page, do not. If you're like this way, please don't cut me loose yet. You want some help, grab clipboard, grab paper, come meet me up front. Yes. because you're looking at a blank page. Okay. Amanda, did you want to do the next one with me? Or partially? Hey, you guys want to meet for help. 
All right. Oh, well, that's fine. Well, I want to be able to interact with you. So, okay, you guys ready? Okay, so remember what is true. Contrapositive is true. Syllogism is true. Detachment is true. So we're gonna, I'm going to write those three up here. Detach. What does syllogism mean? That's the, if you get good grades, you get into a good college. You go to good college, you get a good career. Therefore, get good grades, you get a good career. Okay. okay, let's try this one more time. All right. If you get a job, then you make money. Yeah. So say job money. Job money. If you have money, you could buy a car. Say money car. Money car. Therefore, if you get a job, then you can buy a bingo. That's syllogism. All right. There, light bulb. I saw it. Okay. So it's detach, silo and contrapositive. All of those are just, those are your three options. Those are your three laws that we're working with. Did I lose anybody by saying that? That's just from the other side. Okay? Now, let's see what we have here. It says, if the door is unlocked, then the dog's in the yard. We're going to call unlocked P, then dog yard is Q. That's a conditional. If the door is unlocked, the dog's in the yard. Door's unlocked. What statement is that? That's P by itself, okay? Now, let's make a list of what we know is true. We have if P, then Q, that's true. P alone is true. Because you're told it's true. You have to start with something that's true. That, that's important. You have to start with something here, OK? OK, so what are some potentially other true statements, either by law of detachment, where I can detach the P and the Q, syllogism, or a contrapositive. What are some other combinations here? Good. What can I contrapositive? The, the PQ, right? So contra positive. How's that going to read? Opposite? The dog is not. No, 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 no. Letters first. Letters are easier to manipulate. Okay. PQ. So it is. Want to check? Eight and nine? No, I didn't do that. Nine. Eight and nine. Okay. So here, we're going to take the contra of this. So switch. First switch. Uh-huh. Then, then opposite. That's contra positive. You have to do both. Now, do you see P alone is true? Yeah. So law of detachment also says Q alone true. Do you have any third statements where you can make a syllogism? Not really. There's only P and Q. There's no R involved. Okay? So it's kind of a short list, which is good for you guys. Okay? So now we come here and we take a look. Here we go. So it's really, you get these letters down, okay? Dog not in yard. What kind of letter is that? Uh, P. Oh, yeah. Q. That's a Q. Q, but do you see the word not? Yeah. So it's an opposite, opposite Q. Q. Got to watch for those little itty bitty words. We got an opposite Q. That door unlocked, do you see the word not? Yeah. So it's opposite P. Is that on your list? Yes. <gasps> yes, it's true. And because it is a contra positive. I'm just going to write contra. Uh huh. Okay. Let's go here. Dog, yard. Dog is what? Q. So it's opposite Q. Now I'm told Q's true. So uh, opposite Q has to be what? False. Why? Because Q is true. I can't say the opposite of something is false and the other is true. It, it just doesn't make sense. Okay, let's look at number three. Dog in yard. What's that? True. That's Q. So is Q alone true? Yes. Yeah. That's true. The fancy name that, that's detachment. You can detach the P and the Q as long as you're told the P by itself is true. Do the last one on your own real quick and I'll give you the answer. Get it, get it into letters first. Students, you should be done with page eight. Finishing page nine. Page nine, we make a list Michael, of potential truths. Isn't it because Q is true? I got off the, the dog is in the yard. Oh, yeah. But it's not. Does it say not? Oh, it's still a yep. so silo. Dog in yard. Which one's that? Dog in yard. What letter? Dog just Q. dog in yard. Plain old Q. Door unlocked. Which one is that? P. 
Ricky, is that a contrapositive? Yes. No. 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 All we did was this, right? What's a what's a switch? Has a name. Starts with C. Uh, no, no, no. That switch uh, and the game. Con, 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 con. No. Converse. converse. You gotta know that. Switch is converse. Switch is converse. Converse is not always true. Converse. Balls. Why? What? It's because it's a converse. It's not a contrapositive. Converse. Not always. True. Only the contrapositive. You gotta know your words there. Okay? You take a shot at nine. Alright? Is it the same kind of thing? Okay, so what you're gonna do for nine here is you're gonna take this list and you're gonna make list using letters of the potentially true statements. After you it's kinda like this. It's kinda like what you just did here. So you're just gonna do it as a list this way. Symbols of true statements here, and then your statements here, and then you check. Okay. Oh, yes, you may. Red pen.